Welcome to our Wednesday morning session with Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill is a generative art OG. He's been making computer art since early 70s. He's one of the first pioneers of generative art, actually, making uh, the first computer art on plotter, plotter art by using the perforated cards, which I remember from early days, like when I was a child, my dad was working at the computer center with those like huge magnetic tape uh, mainframes and perforated cards. So that's that's the start, basically the start of generative arts uh, where Dr. Bill was involved in the very, very early days. And he's still active today, making new art and uh, using new tools for making his art. One of which is, well, it's not quite yet, but maybe AI. But before we start, I just want to give you a little story from a uh, recent past when Dr. Bill visited Toronto in November 2021. He gave a generative art retrospective seminar at our first NFT art exhibit in Toronto. Uh, it was well attended. And one of the attendees was a computer science student from U of T Media Labs who uh, at the end of the session asked Dr. Bill a question about AI art. She was a, an AR, AI art enthusiast. This is fairly early days, uh, November 2021. And at that time, Dr. Bill had a very strong stance against the AI art, saying things like, hey, this is not real art. It does not look like art. What is What is this AI stuff? We had an interesting discussion back then between that uh, computer science student and Dr. Bill. But just over a year later, I think Dr. Bill came around to accepting and incorporating AI art in his own work. So Dr. Bill, uh, welcome. And maybe start by telling us about the transformation. What, what was the... Uh, how, how did you go from one extreme to the other? Well, I don't think I came around. Uh, like all things in my life, I like to, I have first a, a visceral immediate response, which was I wasn't impressed to uh, all of a sudden there seems to be a groundswell of enthusiasm behind AR art. And I'm thinking, well, it ain't, it's not a fad. It's not going to go away. So maybe I better speak from experience rather than speak from emotion. So uh, after looking at a bunch of stuff and hearing all the hype and there's a lot of concern about it, I thought I would rather, instead of speaking from ignorance, try it. So actually it was Stas who suggested, I asked him, well, what kind of AI can I make art with? Because uh, all I heard about was chat AI, which is just you know people plagiarizing writing papers in school kind of thing to, uh, you know, working with images. So he turned me on to Mid Journey and I was already a member of Discord. So I found um, the Mid Journey bot uh, on uh, Discord and I started playing with it. So now I can speak not necessarily from ignorance, but from experience, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I'm still not that impressed but it certainly uh, makes me a lot smarter and knowledgeable about what it is and what it can do. So I put together a little presentation just to keep my thoughts in order and um, you know, show you my foray into uh, AI and uh, kind of give you my opinions along the way if that's all right with everybody. What I have here is PowerPoint. Remember, people still use PowerPoint like me. It's a good tool for just organizing my thoughts. It's relatively easy to use. It still sucks as a Microsoft product, but it was pervasive and I used it a lot in my life and uh, I'm gonna use it again. So this is the, uh, the entree to this talk, OG, generative artist foray into AI. Um, back in 1973, most of the people I talked to today weren't born. And yes, we did punch holes in all earth cards right in Fortran to, to generate art. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna stick at the top level here. 
Uh, at this point in my life, I've got two goals. One is to preserve the history of computer art and computer art graphics by telling me stories. So this is just another story. And then I'm going to continue to uh, make uh, art, computer art. The computer is my medium. I have, with Stas's help, put together kind of a legacy website that has all this information uh, about me from 1973 to present. I'm not going to go into that. And it also is kind of an archive and it holds all my artworks from those uh, nascent days, uh, plotter artworks. Okay. Currently today, I still write uh, code to produce art. Uh, and where I publish my art is uh, on FS Hash. And this is sort of the start of my uh, argument here about the correct way to use visual intelligence. And that is uh, not to use other people's images or databases, but if you produce images and then use AI to enhance them or take them farther, um, then that seems okay to me. So I uh, embrace gener or AI from the point of view that uh, uh, I wanna use only my art when I make a AI art images. So if I take my art, art further and produce some interesting images that I claim to be my own, that becomes part of my legacy. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. And I think it will become more apparent as we go along because uh, you know, you, I, I believe you, you are using the AR art tools in a very different way unique way i personally haven't seen necessarily people using it in that way i found it very interesting like i just introduced it to me journey and you took off on your own and you started doing this thing so let's just uh let's see let's go yeah. along i will um, i will show you explorations i will show you some of those extensions as we go further in this presentation i'm just trying to paint a background picture here so um, you can go to these links. Uh, I put them up there to see what's going on. Uh, this is my kind of now tangent into AI. I remember speaking at a, a, a retrospective presentation in Toronto. Stas had some AI hanging on the wall. And to me, it looked like a kind of a, a morphed image. It was about two or 300 portraits melted together to produce kind of a blurry portrait. And I wasn't impressed. I just told him, her, him, the audience, that it looked like, you know, a bad portrait to me. But that was what, uh, almost a year and a half ago and the hype hasn't diminished. It's continued to be out there. There's all kinds of uh, ethical concerns and artistic concerns about AR. And from the artist's point of view, and I'll just briefly say, my concerns along with a lot of artists are copyright issues, credit issues and compensation issues. So, you know, for people who make a living making art, you know, AI is, uh, you know, a concern, let's just put it that way. So still not impressed. This is from an article on Souther from Sotheby's of the latest in artificial art. And it still looks like bad portraiture to me. So this link is in here. Um, and I just throw that out there uh, as my impression of AI art and where I think it's still at. Now, then comes along Mid Journey. Mid Journey is kind of different because Mid Journey is now a tool that I can use. And in fact, they give you like 25 free trials and then you have to pay. So I paid $10 to use Mid Journey. So I started investigating it uh, last month. And these are the links to their homepage and the docs page and Discord. You have to use MidJourney as an extension of Discord, okay? And I'm not gonna do a demo here, I'm just gonna stick with the theme here. But inside MidJourney, this is what some people, there's two tools basically. There's the slash imagine tool and the slash blend tool. So this is the kind of interaction people who don't make traditional art by hand use. They put together what I call these stories. 
And they're very precise stories. So this one person, and I'm using his art without permission, Leandro and Campus here. While I'm working, it's sort of like being in an art classroom. All these other people are working and I can see all their work going by. So while I was waiting for something of mine to compute, I just grabbed this off the screen. So this person is writing to the AI bot in almost a weird foreign language. And this is one of the images he's producing. And I'm going, wow, that's good. Now, where is the art, the human art in this? And the concerns I have that it, AI is drawing from uh, a bunch of image databases where they have name pair libraries of 50 million images. And he's speaking to that as well as to the processes inside of the AI to produce this art. And that's a little far out there. That's, I, I mean, it's all far, far out there for me. But look at the results. I mean, who can say that that's not art? You know, all this stuff in the final analysis gets evaluated by what goes on the wall or the screen. So, uh, you know, this reminds me of the arguments with photography back, you know, over 100 years ago. If you take a picture with a camera, is it still art? If you produce an image with AI, is it still art? So as an artist, I would say, yes, it's art, but, you know, is it an artistic experience, individual self-expression? You know, again, the issue, there's ethical issues involved in all this, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Okay, so the other tool inside Mid, Mid Journey is this blend tool. And blend is just, it's, it's not image compositing. It's basically you pick two images and then it'll blend them together. So um, what I do is I take my own content and what working with Midjourney has done for me is now I understand better what it does with images. So I'm able to change the kind of image. I can write code to differently change my images to produce half of a blend that will work better in the next time I blend something. So if I do this, I change my code to produce something that will then take it further. And that sounds weird, but I'm actually interacting with the AI bot this way. So these were all images. If you go to FX hash under my uh, creations, you can produce these images on your own. You can actually mint them. But I wrote the code for all these images and my code produced all these images. So I'm not using any existing visual libraries or databases. I'm using my own stuff. So this is what I started with on my experimentation with AI, okay? These are sort of my test images, okay? So now this is a combination using the blend command of two pieces, phylo and bulges. And what AI does is you give it two images to merge and it gives you four possible outcomes. Uh, Joseph, you have a question? So these bulges, how big are they? Well, you have to go to the original piece of them, right? Bulges, for example, here is, this is our thumbnails. This is the bulges artwork. artwork. So these pieces originally are 750 square pixels. They're not huge. All right, remember I'm more interested in the algorithm than I can, I can res these things up to 5K if I want to, but I work with relatively low resolution so this piece was produced by a combination of this one and uh, where's the, this one up here, Philo. This, these two, one of these two. I didn't create this on my own. The bot created this. Let's go back. So two pieces of my work produced these four images. And then you can upgrade or refine. These are relatively low resolution but you can, you can re-render one of them, okay, at 1K square. So that's what this is. Now, this is something I would not have produced on my own. However, it is produced by my own artwork. And that is how I think is the, and that's how I use the artificial intelligence bot. And it may be simple to some people, but you know, it's, it's more ethical and more meaningful and more interesting to me than typing in a bunch of text and seeing what the outcome is or grabbing somebody else's images and merging them together and see what it produces. So this I would argue is the way I think is the correct way to use the AI bot.
I think this is a very interesting and very uh, unique way of using AI because it, it, it avoids all the ethical issues like you were saying, you know, AI. Um, I know like there's a lot of legal debate about that, like feeding the database of all kinds of images without getting rights from those original artists into AI and then people using it to produce their images. Of course, it's a it's a very interesting kind of gray area that's going to sort itself out over time. But the way you're using it, it completely avoids those just ethical issues altogether because you're feeding AI with your own images and you are just using it as another tool with like working with your own art, which I find very, very uh, unique and interesting. When I say, you know, it, it, correct or not correct, I mean, from my point of view, I don't mean from society's point of view, right? This is what I think is correct for me to use it this way. If someone else have a question, speak up. So first of all, thank you, Dr. Bill, for hosting this and Stas for hosting this space. The interesting part about um, blending in mid-journey is that even though when you're, blend, when you're blending these images, the model that is used is still the same one as is being used to produce the um, images if somebody just typed in the prompt. Um, the difference is that now you're feeding it the inputs that you've created yourself outside of mid-journey. And uh, to me, um, this is the way the, the future way of uh, AI are being used um, as it evolves. Let me just, so this is a, uh, a combination first pass and this is a refined image. So mid journey will take one of your choices and upgrade it. I mean, I still see some issues. There's, there's actually other versions of upgrade. There's a beta upgrade, whatever. So there's different tools that are coming online that are available. Uh, black and white, you know, I'm looking for things with the most dramatic, weird uh, output I can get. So this is, I wrote this piece called Frankie's Oscilloscope for the Frankie Tribute. And this seems to be producing one of the weirdest half blends. That's something I would not have done on my own. Okay. Is there a Dr. question? Bill, Dr. Bill, I think. Yeah, sorry. Joseph, Joseph has I was, a question. Go I was just going to say, I, I think this is, probably one of my personal favorites. I just thought you deserved a round of applause. Like, well done. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's give a round of applause, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys are seeing this first, right? Thank you, are, you. you are, this is brand new, hot off the press. It's not it's something I, might, I wouldn't have done, but that's what the, the bot did. And now I can take that even further. Here's another combination of Franca's oscilloscope images. So what I see, this is feedback to me. I see the images produced by some of my algorithms that are, are, have dramatic effects in these blends. So I'm going to be biased towards producing more of those and reintroducing them. You see, this is like a cycle, feedback cycle. So fresh, this is another piece. I did blobs just to do this. It was a new piece that I haven't even shown Stas, and I started combining it. But what you can't see is the texture in these images. I mean, the higher you res this, the more weird textures you get in these pieces. Pretty interesting. Now, try some different images. This one is uh, the bulges piece with a boggle piece. I mean, stuff that I, holy moly, it boggles my mind. And then here's picking on one. And I don't know why it has this blur clear thing. That's part of the bot. but. You know, stuff that looks very, you know, you name it. Here, here's some more. This is a, a Windows of the Mind piece with this Frankie's oscilloscope, four pieces. And you start to see the interesting texture in all these pieces, okay? And then when you, when you enlarge one, I love this piece. I mean, it's just the running man or something, you know? It's pretty interesting. Now, I couldn't have done that on my own, but my images produced that with the help of the bot. So the bot is a uh, an alien agent in this process, you know. Uh, here's another combination of blobs and a piece called pages from my thumbnails. You'll see it. And I'm, you know, this is low key. This is subtle. This is light. It's like a Hallmark greeting card kind of thing. But I mean, there's still interesting stuff inside of it. So here is a kind of, we're getting towards the end here. Another interesting piece, blobs. So I rewrote blobs and I reintroduced it and I got this piece. 
And I love this piece in the corner. And the next one I show you is a refinement of this piece. And I mean, to me, this is absolutely stunning. The texture in here, the modeling, the, you know, again, I, I'm blown away by my own stuff, the way it, it works in this environment. All right, well, I'll just do the last one here. So just playing around, I introduced a selfie with the, the one piece, the Frosch algorithm. And wow. And then finally, I've just been consumed by my own art. So that's what AI is doing. It's consuming me as an artist. As much as I, I'm pushing back, I'm starting to really enjoy uh, kind of the interesting interactions from my pieces. And it's influencing my art along the way. So there you have it. That's sort of my presentation. And we can have a discussion now, I hope, between us. What do you think, Stas? Are we good? Yes, yes, this is amazing. I, I do like it. I I want to uh, say that, uh, yeah, this is a very interesting, unique approach. I really like how you are playing with the tool. And All right, let's uh, hear from Ali D. Ali D. Yeah, hello. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, sorry. I'd just like to say thank you for uh, hosting this meeting. It's uh, provided some really good insight towards uh, sort of the AI sort of space. I love that. Of AI AI as well, um, <laughs> well th you're, you're welcome. I mean, I was a skeptic, but then, you know, whenever you're in introduced to a new tool, you know, artists have always taken tools over and used the new tools. I mean, in the beginning, we took over computers and graphics and started making computer graphic art. You know, everybody thought we were crazy. It was so hard to do back then. But now, you know, Mid Journey is a really easy tool to use. So, uh, I mean, the question is, how is it going to be used in the future? Because, you know, now we can make photorealistic images that look real, that are complete fake. So the whole real fake issue comes up again. But I think from an artistic individual self-expression point of view, I have gone in a different direction than I ever thought I would. And I, it, it, the, the loop is that I'm gonna change my imagery to produce even more dramatic and weird effects. And that's how I'm growing as an artist. And that's gonna be, these are my legacy images. You saw it today in the beginning from Dr. Bill. So Dr. Bill, are you, do you think it's quite likely that you may publish some of this as your new work, integrating the AI into your artistic tools arsenal for your published work? Well, it, I could. I mean, the question is, generative art, I like creating instances from a single algorithm. These are one of ones, really. They really are. So that's a whole new direction. And imagine if I could animate this, but how weird this would be. I don't know. And we haven't got there yet. The mm -hmm. tools won't let me do it, but maybe someday. Eugene, mm -hmm. you got a question? Yes, Eugene, please. Yeah. Um, so it's funny that you should mention uh, animation because um, there, uh, if um, if you like Mid Journey, um, I think you will love what you can do with the the newer generation of tools uh, based on stable diffusion, um, which are, uh, if you haven't seen them yet, um, there's uh, a tool that I'm personally, full disclaimer, involved with, but it's called Invoke AI, which is a stable diffusion toolkit. And uh, you can actually create animations and have an extremely wide breadth of control over your, your generations. Uh, and um, um, as a software, developer or as a software um as, as a generative artist that writes software i think you'll be very uh impressed with how you can extend that because it's open source um and include in embed your algorithms as well into into the generations that you produce so it's definitely i think the future and the question is you raise very good ethical uh concerns as well um and i think it, the time will tell how it will be used but uh if artists are allowed to train um, models on their own art and produce art based on their own art as you're doing with Mid Journey, I think that will be a really welcome development in this uh, in this scenario. And I've I've trained um, um, stable diffusion on my wife's art. She's she's a she's a traditional artist, and uh, it's been nothing short of uh, 
mind blowing. The results yeah. have been good. Well, again, I <clears throat> I'm old. I'm retired. I do this in my spare time when I'm uh, living in uh, with a mermaid down here in Florida. It's, it's fun. Keeps me alive. I don't know where it's going to go, um, but uh, again, you know, rather than being someone who, you know, this is stuff I like to find out for myself. And this was my journey into AI and mid journey. And uh, I've just begun. Thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. All right. Yes. Any other questions out there? Um, I was just uh, sort of wondering what you thought about. Is there any other sort of AI art generators or is it just this one that you're particularly interested in? Uh, there are other sorts of art generation. This is the one I just focused on because it's accessible and cheap. And uh, it was just suggested to me. And uh, I think there, there's still a lot I can do with it. You know, yeah, I don't need yeah. I don't need much more than this for right now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think what Eugene was saying and um, with the newer tools and uh, uh, he's working on one, I think we, we can post these links into the Twitter thread following the the call later. Um, it yeah. sounds very interesting. So it sounds very interesting. I'm not personally um, very technical and I, I don't know the difference between stable diffusion or other methods of how AI tools work behind behind the screen, behind the curtain. But um, I do believe the future is very interesting and it ac is accelerating very fast. Of course, like, uh, and I think this way, like this way of using the AI tools, like you are doing Dr. Bill and, and what Eugene was saying, like training the tools on your own art is absolutely like, clean way of using them right like it, it avoids all the ethical issues and so i think you are on the fast track forward you will not be affected one way or the other that the ethical debate may turn out in the future you know this debate whether ai is is useful and, and good for creating art or whether it hinders like the real artists there's i know there's still a lot of people have concern about that i I think it's a tool. And again, if you use it as a tool, particularly like with your own art, I don't see a problem. Like it's absolutely just another tool. And I applaud your uh, your bravery and your like openness to embrace this new tool. And I, I know you're saying you have not come around, but I do think you have come around from like uh, just over a year ago when you were in Toronto giving your retrospective on generative art and uh, <laughs> when when that computer student like asked you the question and you started answering i personally felt like oh wow like it's so interesting and uh, how you had a very strong stance and now look at you you're pioneer new ways of using ai art amazing well I, i've always been a pioneer you know it's the pioneers that get the arrows in their back so get used to it but you know, it, it is useful. I mean, it it does produce stuff that I could not have imagined. But you know, it does take my work further. It's an extension of my work. Uh, can I write code that would even influence it more differently? Probably not, but I can change what I put into it. So from the beginning, it was always garbage in, garbage out. So if you put good stuff in, you should get good stuff out. That's sort of my feeling. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's 100% garbage in, garbage out. And then when you put good stuff in, that some of the times, at least, you get good stuff out. Well, there's a lot of stuff I didn't show. I mean, I've, there's got experiments that go, are just so awful that I wouldn't show them and they get deleted. But, you know, some stuff, is worth looking at further. And you know, there's a chance element in this. I mean, you don't have much control. The control you have is you pick what image you want. And the order doesn't seem to matter whether it's image one or image two. And the other thing you can do is you can add multiple images. You can add up to five images in mid journey. 
And I think all that does is kind of confuse stuff because then it becomes, you know, like mixing paint. If you, you know, if you mix five colors together, you get, you know, you always tend towards gray. So it's, it's, uh, it can be overwhelming. And what I'd like to see is sort of like a factor where you could say, take percent percentage, 10% of this image and 90% of the other. That might be an interesting addition to this tool. How much blend can I, can I bias the image? So there's no real control. It's more like put, putting in a, a two shotgun shells and firing them, you know, off they go. So I see personal ways that I would like to improve the tool, but that's only from using it. Eugene, speaking of, of improving tools, like maybe just very briefly, like what, where, since you are working in the industry, where do you think this is going? Like, what are the current directions for uh, improving AI? Like what Dr. Bill was saying, is, is there working around that control? I know you said you're integrating uh, code right into the AI. Like, what what, el what else is happening? What what's to come? Yeah, I mean, it's hard it's hard to say where things are going because they change um, really on a on a daily basis. You know, something that was new and exciting a week ago uh, has been obscured by by the shiny new thing. So the latest uh, the latest development that that we have in the generative art space is control nets, uh, which is modifying. Um, it's it's a way of modifying the neural network itself to. Um, guide it better towards desirable outcomes. So, for example, if you wanted to produce uh, an image of a scene uh, with several people in it, and the people are in certain poses and uh, having a conversation, etc., just feeding that image into a um, into a generative model would generally produce not very good results. With control nets, now you can guide it much better and actually reproduce certain elements like the poses or or uh, facial expressions etc um which again comes with ethical considerations you know how can you how can you limit that use um so that it's not harmful that's i think with the new, these new powerful tools the main the main conversation happening right now is the harm reduction um because somebody could create deep fakes and that's not what we are here for we are we want this to be used to create art um, right, but can you limit that? Who knows? We can perhaps. It's a combination with techno of technology and education. Um, but generally, yeah, like what what Dr. Bill was just describing, uh, the blending piece that's already in in both major um, stable diffusion user interfaces. The the ability to blend to 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 create sort of a percentage blend of different images or different prompts rather um etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, a, a very um wh where i think invoke ai is, is novel is uh, um, the canvas approach where you can generate pieces of an image and then sort of in paint and out paint so you can in paint um you can mask any area of an image and then generate something in just in that area uh, for example you will generate let's say a, a room and then you paint a crude version of a table and then tell the AI that this is a table and it will generate multiple versions of tables in that room. And just, just as an example, or, or expand a picture by using the out painting and again, feed your own inputs into it, et cetera. So there is a lot that can be done. Uh, it's, it's a wild west right now. So <laughs> who knows where we're gonna go, but it's a very exciting time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely feels like wild west. That's a, that's a good analogy. Yeah, exciting times indeed. and. Dr. Bill, it's so amazing to see you pioneering again in the new space. <laughs> well, I wanted to find out for myself. And I feel, based on what I'm hearing, and Eugene, thank you for your insight. You know, my it's only my little toe is wet in the AI ocean. There's so much there. Um, you know, I worked at Pixar for 10 years, and we did a lot of innovative stuff Uh I saw the models they put together to, you know, to put all the expressions in Woody's and Buzz's face. And they were like hundreds of controls that an artist could manipulate. So uh, I don't know how you, how you turn that over to a robot, you know, but, um, you know, a lot of artists had give them control of an image and they, they do pretty interesting work. <laughs> so you know, get the artists more involved, for goodness sake. Don't leave us out. 
<laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so that's actually an interesting way to, that, that you've worded just this, this just now, turning control over to a robot. I think the key here is that you don't turn over control. You you have to, um, as as a human with intent uh, to create a certain outcome, you need to guide this robot to assert to that outcome. Because when you just like throw things at it and let it do whatever, I don't think the results are, they, they may be visually pleasing, but they're kind of, often they look dead, you know? You need to put the soul, just like working with traditional media, you need to put the soul into this, into your piece in order for it to, to you know, evoke a feeling in, in the viewer. That's, that's, my, that's my view. And, that's, and AI helps that just like, you know, any other medium can. Well, you know, rand, random is a concept that goes way back to the 70s. And uh, I mean, I know people who invented the term controlled randomness, Roger Coker, you know, like, you know, not just totally taking a number out of a bag, but putting a range on it. I mean, that was a big idea back then. So, you know, you don't want to give control up. You want to parameterize it. Um, I mean, when I make my art, I, if I just want texture, I'll let randomness run wild. And I use a lot of it all the time. Serendipity, we used to call it. Whatever happens, happens. But this AI stuff seems, you know, there's serendipity to it, but there's there's something more. I mean, if I ask for a mermaid, where does it get all this at, images of a mermaid from? It doesn't know that on its own. So it has to have a database or a library that it draws from. So its experience is not the human mind, but you know these man-made 50 million word pair libraries out there to pull from. So it's built on something, right? So there's a lot to it. It's all a control issue. An artist likes to have control, but he also likes to turn some of it over to the machine. So, you know, that's the, I guess that's the fun part, you know, being able to move the slider <laughs> back and forth, see what happens. I actually agree with you, Jin. It's, it's a very interesting, uh... Very interesting way of looking at it because I've experienced the same thing. Now you put it into like good good terms that I completely agree with. Like a lot of AI art, while being visually, uh, I don't know, pleasing or at least visually sophisticated, like carries zero emotion. Like it's that. Like you you you. And I think that's key. That's that's very interesting. Um, and so and and I would kind of answer that like when it's a tool that's used intently by an artist, right? That the, who puts their heart and soul into it versus just throwing things at it and like choosing the best outcome or whatever. Because then it does. It, I, I think that's a good way of uh, kind of like, you know, measuring and I don't know if evaluating the right word, but relating to AI art as a viewer, as a, a, a appreciator of art. That could that that is that is spot on. Well, I mean, you still choose. Like, here's a piece. So I threw two pieces at it. It gave me four pieces. Which one do I choose? I mean, it gives me choices. I I know I chose this one. I like this one the most. I think this is good, uh, Doctor Bill. I think your 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 this uh, initial foray into AI art is definitely fruitful and interesting and. I don't know where you're going to take it later, but I think you're on to something. We'll see. So thank you everyone for coming and sharing this uh, space with us. Daria? Yeah, guys, thank you. And Eugene, we never saw you in our event. So if you're in Toronto, I mean, you're always welcome. And Dr. Bill, wow, that was amazing. And how you managed to merge everything together. I mean, you're so cool. So thank you for being here <laughs> and telling all your secrets to everyone. And yeah, people will be able to see it later. Thank you very much, Dr. Bill. Uh, amazing art. I uh, actually, uh, I love it. <laughs> all right. Well, it's fun. Art is life. Keep me alive. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Bill, Eugene, right. Daria, uh, Magician, and others. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're going to stop recording. We're going to exit the space. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Thank Bye, you. everybody. It's been a blast.